The Japanese magazine Famitsu has released a new interview with the Splatoon 3 side order developers. We have some new lore details, some information about the development of side order as well, just some really interesting tidbits about the DLC that I think you'll want to know. So I'm going to be reading through the full interview. Now of course, please keep in mind this is Google Translated, so some things might sound a little bit iffy because as we all know, Google Translate isn't the best. But I still think it's a good way to get this information, as currently I don't think it is translated fully into English anywhere else yet. So as you can see, this is just the full page of the interview, I will link it down in the description. But we're going to focus on the developer questions specifically. So these are the people who are being interviewed here just for reference. And here we can see they sort of give some information about how they feel about the release of Side Order, saying they were busy developing it. Side Order is set in a high color square with no color. Was this decided from the beginning? Side Order began after the release of Free. At first, we didn't have anything decided other than we wanted to create downloadable content with a theme of Order, which was not selected for the final festival of two. So the theme has of course been there for a very long time at this point. They always knew they were going to do something with Order, they just didn't really have many plans outlined at this point, even after the release. I'm definitely curious to learn that they started working on this after Splatoon 3 launched, as I would have thought they would have done it prior, especially when they did tease it during the Direct for Splatoon 3 before the game even came out. Was the goal of the game to repeatedly climb the Tower of Order decided upon the production of the downloadable content started? That's right, we thought about this within the overall framework of the side order project, but the structure that requires repeated challenges and the tower stage go well together, so we decided to officially adopt it at an early stage. Octo Expansion, the downloadable content for Octo Expansion, was set in the deep sea and had a structure where you dive deep. So I think the structure of this time where you climb up to the top floor is a pair and fits beautifully. That's a very good point there, and yeah, it's good to know that they did sort of have the plan for this being, you know, replayable from the very start. At least it came together very early. Please tell us why you drew order in the virtual world. The structure of how you play is significantly different from the main story in hero mode, so we created a world that is easy to handle. However, since we are creating a virtual world in the game, if we create an easy to understand virtual impression, the virtual world tends to have a sense of deja vu. Therefore, we aimed for an expression that was organic and somewhat warmly ordered. By the way, after you clear side order, you can get in Copolis Square as your hometown, but with free, were you planning to have the free hometowns from the beginning? We were thinking about the plans for downloadable content. In addition to focusing on a single player mode with the theme of order, we also wanted players who started playing from free to get to know about the other cities. I also had a thought. Therefore, I came up with a way to organize the information by adding the city itself. So yeah, obviously one of the most notable rewards from the Side Order DLC was being able to play in Incopolis Square. So it is great that they had the idea of that from the very beginning. Will tentacles be able to live up future festivals at Hikara Square? I believe that's them saying off the hook. I'm pretty sure that's right. That's right. The first half of the festival was Ultra Color Pulse 24, which was remade into a funky and smart song that was in heavy rotation during the world tour. In the second half, she will sing a dramatic news song, Headliners High, which I, I can't remember which one that is. I believe that's We're So Bang. That is cute and powerful. Don't miss both. And there it is, of course. Compared to the previous single player modes, I felt that Side Order was more focused on repeated play. Please tell me the reason. So far, we have created a game where you progress through stages and conquer the game three times. Hero Mode in 2, Octo Expansion, and Hero Mode in 3. In particular, since the Hero Mode of Splatoon has become a general summary of the previous single player mode, Side Order is a good time to make a new proposal you can play like this in Splatoon. I thought about it. By creating a structure that allows us to play over and over again, we wanted to allow you to quickly try it out when you don't have a network or when you have a free time, and enjoy a different taste each time. So yeah, I love the fact that Side Order is so replayable and you can keep going through again and again, so it's just interesting to get these tidbits from the developers. There is some randomness to chip enhancement, but wasn't it difficult to balance the difficulty level and weapon strength? You compare a situation in which players have a wide range of chips and a situation in which they specialize in a specific item, the fluctuation in performance of the player's sides becomes very large. Based on the standard of difficulty, we take the stage based on the state where you have a wide range of chips and incorporate elements that will make it easier to clear if you have this ability. The difficulty level was set based on the average number of chips. I was also surprised that the damage numbers were displayed for the first time in the series. 
As players progress through the game, they become stronger, so it was necessary to display numerical values to make it easier to experience the increase in damage and to make it easier to compare various attack methods. Digital fonts are simply easier to read, and the expressions suit the game world. However, we, we asked them to prepare special fonts that would not be a simple digital expression. The direction of enhancement varies for each ship, but were there any criteria for selecting this one? We categorised the player's actions such as attack, movement and painting, and defined a number of ideal states. Simply put, it's like you can defeat the enemy just by playing Ikaro. I'm not quite sure what that means, but I think that's them just basically saying that they came up with these sort of specific actions that the players do, and wanted to make the most sort of satisfying kind of, you know, chips that would really help those abilities develop. The, b the base is based on the selection and consolidation of effects that bring us closer to that ideal form. During the process, we made many new discoveries, including the creation of new combinations. For those who are about to play, please tell us about the weapons and chips you recommend for strat sheet. I recommend all of them, but when collecting chips, I recommend that you keep in mind that you collect chips of the same color, that is, of the same type, it makes it easier to bring out your strengths. Personally, I like collecting lucky chips and filling the screen with items. Do you have any tips for collecting chips? Each palette has a set of chip types that are likely to appear, so if you're unsure, I think it's best to choose the type that is most likely to appear. You can also increase the probability of a strain that is likely to appear by using the hacking. By the way, each palette comes with a set of characters and weapons, but does that mean they have their own weapons? Neriverse system automatically determines the weapons that the characters that each palette is based on. The weapons that each character would wear and the weapons that look good on them. So that's kind of how they came up with each palette, just kind of what types of weapons they would actually use, but also which ones looked good too. Because let's be honest, some of these characters, it must have been hard for them to come up with what weapons their palette should have, as we never saw these characters use certain types of weapons. But it does make sense, I like the way they've done it. Many characters tried the challenge immediately after it was released, and some were cleared quite quickly. Time Attack is also quite popular. To be honest, I was surprised to see so many players progressing faster than I expected. Not only that, but I'm really happy that you're enjoying yourself in your own way. Since the release of Side Order, the number of people playing Battle on Salmon Run has increased, so I think they're enjoying the entire Splatoon game. I hope we can continue these efforts and expand the possibilities of Splatoon. So let's move on to the next part of the interview, which will give us some details about Side Order specifically in terms of the lore and some of the decisions behind what we experience. Please tell us the concept and image of Pearl and Marina's new costumes. I felt that space was the motif, such as Pearl's space-like jacket and Marina's starlight pattern on the ends of her hair. Why? It has become a world-class artist, so Pearl's suit is a space suit that she created with the intention of surpassing the rest of the world. The exclusive Hort Couture cost 200 million. Oh my god. 200 million as it's better of a top artist. How about Marina? I thought Marina would look good in a suit with a strong color setup, so I tried to make it look crisp but still give off the impression of an engineer. Marina's tips seem to be inspired by Pearl's momentum and have a cosmic pattern. So it's interesting to see the sort of design choices here behind these characters. I do love their outfits so much. I think they look really great in Splatoon 3. Please tell why Mizuta has a bandage on his left hand. Ape got caught up in the virtual world and tried the best to conquer the tower in the same way, but I couldn't move as much as I expected and got injured. I think he kind of regrets slacking off at the training school. I love some of these pieces of art that we've got here. These are really, really great. I believe that's referring to Arct, by the way. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's who they're referring to. At least that's what it seems like from this as well. Yeah, I think that is definitely correct. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, th this <laughs> I love these images. I, I, I think these might actually be available in-game to look at as well, so that's definitely interesting. By the way, is Deadfish the artist's name of Arct as a DJ? That's right. I think you were thinking about it yourself. Maybe they're using something they thought of as a handle name. What is the motive of the color palette? The gimmick that makes a sound when touched also has become a hot topic on social media, but please tell us about the design process, including the sound mechanism. Paint palette and MIDI pad. MIDI pads are equipment used for live performances and music production. By the way, the color chip used to specify colors looks like a device with terminals. I wanted to get the real thing because it turned out to be a nice product. There wasn't a gimmick that would make a sound when you first touched it, but one day during development I was surprised that a programmer had created one. Most of chip sounds are fragments of tentacle songs, by adding not only the melody but also percussion to give it the sound variety, we created something that would be fun to collect. Also if you hit the palette during the battle, you might hear something. So there's a look at that. 
Is there a reason why you chose fish as your enemy? Please tell us why you chose the bone-like design. Since the story is set in a white world, bones naturally come up as a design motif. The concept was to defeat large number of enemies, each of which moves according to simple commands. So a school of fish bone that was difficult to sense was a good design choice. At first, bones looked quite realistic, but at the suggestion of the person in charge, we were able to make them look like they were endearing while still kind of creepy, keeping a creepy impression. I don't know, I don't think some of these fish are endearing at all, like especially some of the harder ones. The little ones, okay, yeah, they're kind of cute. But no, some of these are not even nearly endearing. I love these development images, by the way. I don't know who does these. I'm not sure if it is one specific artist or if there's lots of artists who do them. But I recognize some of this, this art style specifically from some other Splatoon development images and also Animal Crossing too, as we know a lot of the same developers work on it. So whoever this artist is, I love their work. They do such a great job. Please tell me why the enemy's name is a musical term. Since the world is created by Marina, who is involved in music production, I decided to use it as a musical term. Before they had a name, we used to call him Bouncing Enemy or Bomb Pew Pew Enemy, which made him look a lot cooler. Please tell us about the image of the boss and the design concept. Does... Do they have an image of being ruled by order? I'm not quite sure what they mean there. Some of the translations, like I said, are a bit iffy, so it's kind of hard to tell what they mean at certain points. But that is just purely the fault of Google Translate, not the article itself. When I first drew the concept art, I'd already decided that number 8 and Pearl would go to rescue Marina, who had been controlled by the virtual world she created, and there's some really cool art there. Using a sketch as a starting point, I solidified the playful parts and ended up with a design covered by the octopus's feet. Due to the influence of the power that desires order, a design related to the Final Festival 2 is used. So, so cool. I, the artwork looks so good. I love it. How about Goro? Okay, I'm not sure what they mean. It was a boss who sh Oh, okay, it's that boss down below. Okay, that makes sense now. The boss was inspired by Inoue. By the way, the bumper placed on the stage is a soy sauce holder, and when you bump into it, soy sauce will come out. In its first form, before the shell breaks, the protrusions turn into pudding, and when they collide with the soy sauce on the bumper, they taste like sea urchin. Wow, they thought about everything here. That combination of pouring soy sauce on pudding. Actually, that black liquid was soy sauce. By the way, in the second form, the protrusion on the shell is like a rice bowl, and there's sushi rice inside. It has an interesting finish that combines function with form and seafood. I did not think about that at all, but yeah, looking at this closer now, you can see exactly what they mean by that, and that's hilarious. It is just a boss that is completely based on seafood, and I had no idea that that was supposed to be soy sauce coming out. I just thought, you know, it's that sort of toxic ink that they have. It's a boss that doesn't move on its own for the most part, but the smaller it gets, the easier it is to roll, so it becomes harder to roll it while aiming for the bumper. Was Kaizen Rondo inspired by the conveyor belt sushi? During battle, you can hear a singing voice that sounds like a scream, but what on earth is that? It was originally a hospitality robot created by Marina, but it was taken over by order and became ominous and aggressive. The design is based on conveyor belt sushi and merry-go-round, and the stage is inspired by a circular prison and a circus arena. This is a song sung by Pseudo Kaisenroid, but since the world of order is built, built on everyone's memories, it may be that he's singing a song that is deeply ingrained in someone's memory. So yeah, I can definitely see it now that this boss is supposed to be based on a sushi conveyor belt. I love that theming. I didn't think about any of this at all, but it's really cool to see their idea ideas behind it. So here we are on to the parallel canon, who looks like an inkling and is a copy of the squid player. A data of inkling number four is rumored to be the strongest, was copied and made into a paste by order. If you look closely, it's all muddy. The mask type is a copy of number four, and the helmet type is a copy of number four. If you have save data for two, it'll appear imitating the appearance of number two in it. Wow, that's really, really cool. I didn't actually know that at all. That's a really interesting fact. So yeah, it does basically 100% confirm that this is based on number four. I think people already generally knew that already anyways. So whilst we didn't get a physical appearance of number four in this, yeah, that is kind of how number four fits into it. So some really, really neat details there and some amazing new artwork shared too. So I'm going to end things off here. There is more to this interview, but I'll let you folks read that for yourself in case you want to learn about any of the other details. I think that would be fun. I don't want to give it all away, you know. But yeah, there is some really cool concept art in here as well that you can check out as you can see on screen. And just some other fun tidbits and lore about Side Order that I definitely think you want to know. So like I said, I will link it in the video description if you do want to check this out fully for yourself. And yeah, let me know your thoughts about it down in the comment section below. If you made it to the end, be sure to comment Splat Gang so I know you did. 
If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on notifications for more.